Hi, this is part two of the Raspberry Pi supercomputer cluster that I'm building. And a lot of people have asked for a uh, second part to this thing. Uh, continue on. Where's it at? Well, okay, no, I haven't done anything on it. But I was thinking about the case for the thing. And then I remembered I've got three of these babies I scored from the dumpster. The Apple uh, G5 power mac and these cases are just beautiful all aluminium cases and uh the things that these are absolutely uh, useless on their own um the processor in them is like the old g5 uh, processor it's absolutely ancient it's of absolutely no use but if we can get this thing out come on there we go we have a beautiful aluminium case. We've got the fans, airflow through the front uh, grills here. So I thought, what if we actually, ugh, dust in there is pretty horrible, but what if we actually, sorry, I'll change the angle because I wanted to show you the, uh, <laughs> the Apple symbol there. And what if I actually replaced the motherboard in this thing with a huge motherboard that actually contained all of the Raspberry Pi uh, boards on them and then we can reuse the power supply which is in the base of this thing and uh, we've got the fans and we've got a beautiful aluminium case and I thought that'd be pretty neat if I redesigned it to fit all in there so let's just uh, take this thing apart and uh, have a squiz where we're at with that and there's the specs on this thing for those playing along at home. 1.6 gig. Look at this, uh, 512 mega memory, 160 gig hard drive. You know, these G5 uh, processor machines, yeah, they're just so absolutely useless for anything today. But uh, let's rip the guts out of it and uh, see what we've got. Guys, a lot of dust in this thing. Absolutely terrible. And I'm all out of compressed air. Bugger. And people have actually uh, turned these cases into, uh, you know, coffee tables and seats and all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful stuff. And they're actually um, got like a cult following these uh, cases. And I believe they sell for a pretty penny um, on eBay. We've got ourselves a uh, fan in there. What brand is... Uh, I'm not sure of my brands. Anyway, the fan noise and stuff like this in. I haven't powered it up since the last video but I uh, love how it just comes out and everything is uh, quite modular inside these puppies so let's try and get the rest of it out there's a oh no oh that one's not as modular oh, I was just talking it up and there we go got to get the cables out Woo! got a speaker there's the graphics card inside this puppy for those playing along at home. It's an NVIDIA job, I'm not sure. Absolutely ancient. It'd be interesting to see uh, the <laughs> performance of this ancient uh, NVIDIA card compared to, say, uh, the GPU inside a, you know, a fairly modest uh, GPU inside the modern uh, Raspberry Pi and um, all-winner uh, chipsets. Hmm. And this fan here pops out as well once again. And of course, if the existing uh, fan solutions in these were uh, buggered or they were too loud or uh, whatever, I'm sure the airflow uh, would be more than adequate for what we need for a uh, Raspberry Pi supercomputer cluster. Although we haven't um, you know, calculated the power and everything else yet. But anyway, we could uh, replace those fans uh, if we had to. No worries. And that's an A1047 for those playing along at home. Everyone loves playing along at home. Now, I may have actually picked the uh, wrong machine to open up here. I didn't remember what one was what. But this is uh, different to the one I did. I uh, had a peek inside before um, on my previous video. This one has got uh, stand... Well, you know, not a uh, PC standard, but uh, they've got... Um, the power supply is under here, of course. So they've got these... Um, Molex type uh, power connectors, but the other machine that I took apart had these beautiful, and here's a uh, video of it from the previous one, these beautiful uh, studs coming out, which went directly into the board. There was no wiring or anything like that. It was just a beautiful uh, design and interfacing from the power supply through to the motherboard. Now, which one I go... 
which one might be better? I'm tempted to use the sexy uh, solution, the one with the um, the studs that stick up and then just screw directly into the motherboard. And I, of course, I can uh, design my Raspberry Pi um, baseboard motherboard to actually uh, support those. You get the dimensions right, everything else. You drill the big holes, you put the studs in, and there's no wiring. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know which one pros and cons both ways. Hmm. Actually, the worst part about this uh, Power Mac design, if you look right down in here, there's the uh, modem. It's got a modem connector on the back, an RJ11. You'll note that cable running all the way up there. It runs all the way up, all the way up. And here is the, <laughs> is the actual modem module all the way over on the odd diagonally opposite side of the motherboard. What the hell were they thinking? That's just ridiculous. Otherwise beautiful systems engineering inside this thing, but yeah, that's big thumbs down. So I took the memory modules out and uh, there's the big Molex or one of them. They've actually got uh, two of these as I sent uh, one over that side as well. I got that one out and uh, there it is. So I'm sure I can get the uh, pinouts for these babies uh, somewhere, have to look that up. And then from the front panel, uh, they've got this. This is like the uh, power connector. Uh, it's got a USB and a firewire and an audio, um, I think. And that's just some little uh, weird ass uh, smaller pitch uh, one. You can still get those though, but um, you know, like that's really annoying. I don't want, probably don't want to reuse the soft uh, power switch on the front. So I'm not sure if I'd go to the effort to, uh, redo that. I'd need to get the pin out for that. Um, I don't know, is the full uh, service manual for this G5 available online? Haven't even looked yet. Kind of just winging it at the moment. But uh, yeah, whether or not I go for the stud solution or uh, put the Molex connector like that onto uh, my board and then just, you know, reuse that. I don't know, six of one, half dozen of the other. All right, let's lift this processor module out of here. Ta-da! And there it is. Oh, beautiful. Look at that board-to-board, uh, -board high speed uh, um, interface connector. That is just beautiful. Look at the bypassing surrounding that G5 processor. Just absolutely ridiculous. Big uh, heat pipe and everything else on there. And that is just, you know, <laughs> I believe these are really power hungry uh, beast Foxconn job, of course, and uh, yeah, these are just that is a big ass heatsink on a processor which is like your mobile phone probably has more power than this thing these days. It's really interesting trying to get this uh, baby apart. It uh, slides out. I take out a couple of posts. I think I've still got one left there. But uh, this divider here seems to be screwed into the board from the other side. So it's probably going to come out with the motherboard. But the motherboard should slide in that way slightly and lift out. Um, and that's what it looks like anyway. Because you can see the pins down in there for the slide-in part of it. One of those. So this should slide in like that. And then... Oh, yep, 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 all the, all the connectors are in the way, but uh, if you get those over, it should eventually come out, mm, somehow, let me work on it. Oh, hey, whoa, that was a bit tricky, but uh, there she is, it's the main board, oh, look at the heat piping on the bottom of that baby. Didn't see that one in the uh, previous teardown. Nice little chunky uh, finned heatsink on the bottom of the BGA there, which is under the uh, processor. That's like the interface, I don't know, the Mac architecture, the G5 uh, processor system architecture and stuff. But obviously they need that big ass BGA there to uh, interface with the processor. Is that some? Is that like a memory controller or IO interface? Um, something like that. You can see the differential pair traces all come down here to this baby which is another one oh there that would be uh given its location that would be a, uh, a bridge slash uh, interface driver for the um for the slots there i would be guessing and uh wow that's there's a lot of 
lot of heat sinking on the back side of that thing. I'm quite, quite surprised. Jeez, but look at, uh, look at the flux residue left over on those pins. That's pretty how you're doing for an apple. And they've got some uh, cables coming through here. These are, it looks like they're coming from the power supply. They're going up to the uh, hard drives and uh, everything else up on the top half. So that's how they've got them across. It's rather nice. There's actually no dust there. A little bit accumulated on some of the channels. The reason they've got these plastic channels in there, they'd be uh, some thermal ducting. And uh, oh, this thing is oh, it's dust all over. Oh. Awful, absolutely awful, the dust in this thing, but um, there we go. We have an empty case. We could whack our uh, uh, apple pie motherboard straight back in, and Bob's your uncle. Now, the good thing about uh, having this case for the project is that, well, decision made. You work around the case you've got, and that's so often I've found for various uh, projects I've worked on that you will, you know, choose a nice case for it and that'll decide the form factor. It'll even sometimes decide the features and, and the user interface and all sorts of stuff like that. So, you know, like choosing this and going, right, I'm going to build into this. It, you know, you've got a framework to work from and engineers work best when they're given you know, specifications to work from. And in this case, yep, we know our motherboard's going to be this big, our manual holes are here, we've got X amount of power, uh, we've got X amount of airflow, everything else, X amount of thermals and whatnot, and we've got what's available on the uh, front panel, for example, like this is all just, you know, solid aluminium here. Um, none of this aluminum rubbish for you Yanks. You know, maybe we could have like a take out the CD drive up here and have like a display, something like that. You could have like an LCD in there or something like that or a whole bunch of LEDs. You could do like a custom uh, display board to show them all working because you can, you know, you can have LEDs and stuff shining through here, but it's not, you know, it's not the same. You know, it's not nearly as good. So maybe... You know, you can have some sort of LCD interface uh, as on the back. We've already got our cutouts here, so we could probably have our um, Ethernet exactly where it uh, was before down here. So most likely the boards, well, it was mounted on the other board, wasn't it? I'll get that in a second. But uh, so it's going to be the right height, everything else. So one standard 1.6 millimeter uh, thick board. You whack it in there, you whack your Ethernet, um, Ethernet connector on there, and it's going to line up. So that'll be the master Ethernet interface, the RJ11 down here you could use that as a serial uh, you could break out some uh, USBs or something if you uh, wanted to do so to have a framework to work from well bingo you just go for it I mean now all we're going to do is get there and measure uh, all the dimensions of everything you can either work from the uh, standoffs on here or work from the uh, board it's probably easier to work from the board you know get a big metal rather than try and get a big metal rule in here and it doesn't uh, fit for these standoffs you can get them all from the uh, PCB and we can do the uh, slots in there for those um, ones where it you know it slides in and uh, gets hold of that or you don't have to even put those in if you don't want to uh, if you don't want to get fancy pantsy you can just uh, make a big uh, cutout hole for those uh, things and well I don't know yeah we're not going to hook drives or anything like that up but you know we could if we uh, really want to do but uh, this is quite exciting and from a thermal point of view it's brilliant uh, we're going to uh, have airflow got airflow right through the front here and uh, blow it out the back no worries now of course you can uh, reuse components as well. For example, if you didn't want to go out and source and buy the uh, power connector here, you could uh, desolder it. You need a decent uh, solder sucker because this is going to be a multi-layer board connected through to big uh, ground planes. It's probably going to have um, the thermal relieves on the uh, pads. But anyway, yeah, you need a decent solder sucker, but you can uh, get that puppy out and reuse it on your own board. And bingo, you've got a matching power connector for it and so we've got uh, two of those there um, you know if you didn't want this uh, board say it was foldy or I don't know, you probably couldn't even sell this thing for five bucks on eBay could you I doubt it anyway the case is uh, the thing that's worth all the money this motherboard is probably useless um, to almost anyone I stand to be corrected on that sorry for all you uh, G5 Power Mac aficionados out there who go I'll have it by the way look at this we have a genuine bodge wire look at that wire wrap wire going all the way over there and uh, I have no idea what that puppy is for. 
Hmm, anyway, um, yeah, they didn't want to respin the board for that one, so yeah, let's just uh, mod it. No worries. like the little heatsink there. I want to keep that. But that's not as big a goof as the one when they've got up here. This is the power connector with the uh, crusty uh, <laughs> flux residue soldering. And obviously, they've screwed up some, uh, you know, star grounding uh, type thing, I would presume. And uh, yeah, they brought it back to that big uh, power resistor there. That'd be a uh, current shunt resistor. You can, I think you can see the two traces going off there. That'd be going into a uh, diff amp, measuring the uh, current, presumably, um, for this expansion connector. Check this out. I was taking this bracket off here, and look what we've got on here. Little plastic TO220 package, just in uh, you know, a cable, just cable tied on there, like that. Oh, I can't quite see the part number on that. It's a 2N3904. Wow, oh, yeah, there it is. Wow, I thought that would have been like a little uh, temp sensor jobby. Um, it could still be, but why they've actually put that transistor up there? Look, they've even gone to the effort to make a bloody connector for that. Like, it wasn't using that as a heatsink. So, what? It, like, why would you want to measure, I mean, you can actually use the PN junction of a transistor if you want to measure uh, temperature, you know, you get uh, uh, 10 millivolts per degree C, I think, or thereabouts, but uh, like sticking, like, but they're not, what, what, d d d d what? Woo, look at all the dust still on there. Oh, yucko. Um, anyway, here's our uh, key slots and we can easily uh, make those out. How you would, uh, uh, well, you could either specify, you could do that two ways. You specify either in the PCB I'm talking about, you either um, specify like a drill like that. So you specify a hole, a non-plated hole, and then you specify a slot uh, going from, which is a hole with a uh, with a hor with a dimensional length on it um, from that point through to the center of that one and we're in like Flynn on the power supply just uh, two screws here lifted off a metal cover got uh, two crusty fans on the end there they really need a decent uh, clean out no doubt and uh, unfortunately no pin out on the thing uh, well whatever um 450 watt max capability now that sounds great um, but that 450 watts, of course, capability is spread across all these different uh, rails. So, and, and look, a total of 340 watt uh, maximum on those. Now, you know, you could potentially get in there and try and, you know, hack the thing and remod it because we only need the 5 volt output, okay? Because this thing's got a 3.3 volt output and, you know, it's we're basically going to be pissing away 22 amps of the uh well times are uh, 3.3 uh, um in watts as the total uh, capacity of this thing um so you know if we don't modify it in any way we either have to have an external dc to dc converter to use the power available in these uh 12 volt uh, ones and the 3.3 volt uh, rail as well. You know, you wouldn't worry about the uh, negative rails or the stand, you know, standby. You can get a little bit of uh, power from the uh, standby ones. In fact, the standby, my, would it come in handy? Maybe you could have like one uh, Raspberry Pi in there uh, working continuously off the standby and then only when you press the soft power do you, boom, you know, power up all the others. I don't know, you know, it, I hadn't planned on anything like that. I don't think I will, but you could. Hey, um, and 25 volts standby at 5.2 amps capability. Holy power availability, Batman. That's um, insane. What the hell do they need? Um, you know, uh, like 125 watts standby for. Wow. I don't get it. And there are some people saying, well, you know, you probably shouldn't use this power supply anyway because it's, you know, too old. You'd at least go in a recap it or something like that. Yeah, maybe, you know, that's a half reasonable uh, argument. But uh, eh, for the time being, I think I'll just uh, use the thing because it, it does work. Now, if we just look at the uh, an unmodified power supply with the 5 volt 19 amp rail, that's 95 watts, if my uh, math is correct. I'm not that good at math. Um, and the Orange Pi one, I've measured at uh, 3.7 watts uh, nominal for all four cores running uh, the boink 
uh, software at you know a hundred uh, percent. So that gives us uh, twenty five boards. We can you know nominal. We can power from that single five volt uh, nineteen amp rail. Might be able to get a bit more juice out of that, but I don't know. You know this is going to be a decent power supply. They're probably going to have uh, overcurrent protection and all the rest of it. I would be guessing. Um, and then you'll get like another twenty or so maybe from the uh, if you were able to um, well maybe less than that with uh, conversion efficiency and stuff if you had um, an external like an onboard uh, boost uh, converter from 3.3 up to uh, 5 mate you know you could power some more boards um, or you have a uh, buck converter 12 volts at uh, 23 amps um, that's where all most of the power on this baby goes and uh, you know so if you're going to tap off something I would uh, tap the 12 volts and take that down to uh, 5 and then you can power as many boards as you want but yeah 25 is not a huge number of boards for you know this huge monster case here and well you know we wouldn't want greater capability than that right so we're looking at uh you, you know your standard raspberry pi or your uh orange pi one that i've got a few of these i've got the new uh orange pi pc2 on order it's just come out and it's got the new h5 uh quad core uh, processor in it so that looks uh pretty jazzy and it's uh 20 dollars i think for the and it's got double the memory or one gig or something like that anyway um these boards are tiny compared to the space inside here now if you've watched the uh, previous video and you should have uh, you know I came up with some sort of slot arrangement to plug this in I don't think I'll do that because it ties me to one particular type of board because as I said previously while the pinout on the Orange Pi 1 is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2 it's actually uh, backwards they put it on backwards because the boards actually come out this the expansion boards actually come out this way so if you had an expansion board it comes out like that instead of uh, on the Raspberry Pi which is over the top like that so the pinouts actually backwards so what I'll do is just uh, uh, design a simple uh, vertical riser board so the motherboard so instead of this connector here you know slotting into the motherboard like this and then clipping onto a uh, right angle connector on the motherboard I'll actually have it like this and then have a riser I'm sorry for the crudity of the model here I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it um, then you'd imagine this is a blank oh like let me get a blank board okay so what you've got is a little uh, just design a custom uh, uh, riser board like this that converts the vertical header on the Raspberry Pi or the Orange Pi into a uh, right angle header basically so then you can plug that into your motherboard like that so the Raspberry Pi one would have say a small one like that and the Orange Pi one would have because it's well you'd have to design it so it's upside down like that actually um, so you'd have to design this one with the short board like that that then plugged in and then the Raspberry Pi with the big one because the pinouts back to front and then the Raspberry Pi plugged into the motherboard like that if you get what I'm getting at so the good thing about using a uh, riser board plug-in like that is that you can use basically um, any board. Your motherboard will com be compatible. It'll use the standard Raspberry Pi header, but then but the physicality of actually loading the board on there, and you know you have to do a slot, and you've got to uh, you know not have connectors foul and all sorts of things. Um, it just you know it gives you options later for uh, installing that. So the width. And then uh, you don't lose any, with the slot, you don't lose any space by plugging that in and then moving it over like that. So you can just plug it in vertically. So you can actually fairly densely pack these things like that because they're uh, basically plugging in vertical and because you've got the large, the large uh, connectors like that, the Ethernets and the USB, the header board is smaller than that but you've got your right angle connector on there it could be on the other side um yeah you know work out the pin out arrangements uh later and you know everything else um yeah so you should get um about that much space between your boards you've got to watch out for your uh, heat sink uh of course that could be an issue um but once you do that then you can even mix and match different types of boards any ones you had in there all you've got to do is design a little um header uh, you know, a little riser board to match uh, whatever Raspberry Pi or other style board that you wanted to use on this thing.
Now, of course, one of the big things on a uh, supercomputer, like a clustery thing, high powered, anything high powered like this, just your regular PC, of course, the airflow, the thermals of this are a big deal. Got the fans at the back, they'd be blowing out, so it'd be sucking in through the nice front grill here. Oh, I can see my hand, look at that, it's beautiful. Love this case. Oh. It's pornographic, it really is. So uh, you want a nice airflow uh, with as little resistance and a little uh, turbulence as possible in there. So would you mount your Raspberry Pi boards like that or like that? I'll give you a second to think about it. Of course you would mount them like this because then if you mount them like this, you're blocking all the airflow coming through here with your damn boards. That's and then you're not getting good airflow over your heatsink because we'll glue a little with some thermal glue, glue little heatsinks on these. So you want to mount them in this direction like this. So you want to stack them like that so that the air flows over the heatsink. I know you've got airflow issues caused by the uh, by the connectors and everything else, but hey, that's better than the entire board blocking like that because at least you've got, you know, gaps between there and then, you know, a gap between each board. But if you put it like that, you're really restricting that airflow and the airflow, it'd come in here like this and then flow around the board and you'd have this dead space in here, you wouldn't get, uh, you know, the airflow, well, the airflow over your heatsink here would be horrid. So you want them in that direction like that. So how many of these things can we fit? Well, I'm gonna eyeball it. One, two, three, four. Okay, so four across. Oh, you could space them, say, 30 apart. Uh, it's 250 high, so that'd round to, like, maybe eight of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. Maybe, you know, to just give yourself some wiggle room, everything else. You know, you might say, oh, I'll be generous and say 40. That would bring you down to six. So um, six fours, uh, well, you know, six fours, 24. 24, 25, hmm. Now, of course, we could gain some more space by just saying, well, you know, we're only going to design the thing around the uh, Orange Pi 1 because it's much smaller than the uh, Raspberry Pi. But, you know, like, I think compatibility's uh, probably important. Mix and match uh, boards, you know, I might use the Orange Pi 2 uh, one, the Orange Pi PC, uh, two I'm going to get, so, you know, yeah, that's, I think, even bigger than the, is it bigger than the Orange Pi one? Anyway, um, yeah, you got to, you know, sort of design it for, uh, the worst case biggest board, uh, so we could squeeze more in like this, I mean, we're talking, you know, like, 20 with the Raspberry Pi 2, either, you know, up to maybe 32 of these we can comfortably fit in this, but the problem is, look, we're wasting all this space in here. We could at least get another depth like that. And that's where these riser boards come in. Your riser board, you could actually have two of them uh, that plug vertically into your riser board and then your riser board plugs horizon horizontally over to here. And of course you can supply your five volts power through uh, the Raspberry Pi header from your riser board like this, but you could actually have two of them which then are plugged in like that, but then you'd maybe have to change the pin out uh, over here. You couldn't use the standard Raspberry Pi one, or you wouldn't have to wire them all the way through if you wanted to get, say, the serial and other ports um, out of their SPI and everything else um, out of these things. So you might have to have a custom header, a custom pin out on your riser board like that, or you could just have some extra pins or uh, something like that. So instead of a 40-way uh, header, you could use a slightly uh, larger one that, or a separate one, um, actually next to it, that, um, you know, had like a smaller number of uh, breakout uh, pins to share between the two boards if you wanted to stack them like that. So, you know, 32, we could probably get 64 Raspberry Pi, uh, regular Raspberry Pis inside this thing without too much of a problem. Now, the one thing I haven't uh, decided on yet is whether or not I'm going to go for the um, SPI uh, solution that I uh, figured last time and do my own, um, you know, SPI to Ethernet uh, converter chip on there, or whether or not I'd get 
you know, because this case is all, you know, super high powerful, looks fancy pantsy, you know, you got this thing sitting there, oh yeah, it's, you know, got hundreds of ARM cores in it, and, you know, you get piddly little um, SPI uh, bandwidth out of your Ethernet, so I, you know, I'm tempted to actually um, maybe have a little uh, short Ethernet um, jumper for each one and then maybe it went next to each one of the boards just have the Ethernet cable coming out but then um, if you but then you've got to decide whether or not you do what everyone else does with their uh, clusters and they just use um, existing hubs or uh, switches like this one you know and you could mount them up here of course um, there's no worries about that at all you can mount a whole bunch of switches up there oh well yeah you get what I'm getting at um, and then you can have all the cables coming out and you could loom it and look all very impressive and stuff like that so I could just cop you know do it as a cop out do it uh, do it that way or but if you did it the other way you know and you use the ethernet and you actually had vertical RJ45s on your motherboard here coming out and then little short cables you can actually buy uh, pre-made little a uh, couple of inch long um, ethernet uh, cables so you know, um, you could use those and, oh, but then you've got to have the magnetics on there. You've got to design basically this switch um, onto your board, which is just a single chip solution. I tore this apart um, last time, but you can design that on there. But then the, the, the magnetics and everything else, is it worthwhile for a one-off project? You'd almost say you're better off if you had the room actually buying these, stripping them down to board level, and then just sticking that board onto your motherboard. In fact, you could even uh, have this as like a vertical um, solution like that, and either have short cables or vertical. Um, somebody actually pointed out, I thought you couldn't get them, but somebody actually uh, posted a link to one. You can actually get a vertical male uh, RJ45 connector, a PCB mount RJ45 male. So in theory, you could have, uh, you know, eight of those on the board and just come along and go click. And in theory, um, your switch would just click into your board like that and it wouldn't into your motherboard and it wouldn't take up much room. So that's, you know, it, it's almost a sexy solution to actually uh, do it that way. Um, so that, you know, um, hands up if you think maybe that would be the go to put those uh, vertical male ones on there and, you know, you'd have to line them up properly. You'd have to make sure, get all your dimensions precisely right. So you've got eight of them mounted on your board and just go click. I mean, and then all you got to do is wire up the uh, DC jack here. So that'd be, I don't know, that might be kind of jazzy, but hmm. So yeah, there's lots to decide on here. I want to do the motherboard, of course, lay out the motherboard. So the next step will be to get all the dimensions, measure it, uh, lay out the motherboard, and then start planning. Often, uh, when you've got that template, yeah, that PCB template in your um, in your CAD uh, software, then you know you start playing around with modules and see how they fit and. You know, like, then you start sort of, you know, you could even do like a paper or a cardboard mock-up uh, like this. So you can actually, uh, lay, once you've done all your dimensions, put in your PCB CAD file, print it out. And then, um, often, I've done this uh, before, is, uh, you know, I'll print it onto a big A3 uh, sheet of paper in a one-to-one -one, uh, scale for my PCB. And then I'll just get uh, some glue, stick that paper onto uh, cardboard just so it's a bit more rigid. And then I've actually got a real mock-up board to actually play with inside this thing and then you can start come along and you know seeing exactly you know start refining how many boards you can fit in but then you know you've got your thermal trade-offs as I said uh, you know 95 watts we can only for the without modifying the supply we're only going to be able to uh, probably get you know power 25 boards or thereabouts uh, you know if we wanted to tap in to more power we're going to have to have on board uh, DC to DC converters, whether or not you design those onto the board or you buy the expensive little uh, bricks that you can, you know, plug in. Um, so if cost is no object, I wouldn't roll my own DC to DC for that. I'd just, uh, you know, buy them or you can just buy them on Ali, you know, you can get cheap ones. Like you don't have to buy the TI power modules that, you know, cost, you know, what, 20 or 30 bucks each or something like that. You can just maybe get them on, um, you know, AliExpress or something like that and just, you know, yeah, they're going to be probably good enough. Um, to do the job and, you know, have some uh, power bricks on there because you wouldn't have just one. Um, I would, 
if I was going to tap into that uh, 12 volt rail there, I'd probably have maybe a power brick per, depending on what one I got, you know, if it was like a that or 8 watt, jeez, can't even add up, uh, multiply that by 2, then you might have one of those per 2, but then if you had, uh, then if you had the dual board riser like that, then you'd have to dedicate one of those power bricks, you know, a 10, a 8 watt power brick or whatever, to each one of those two, and then you'd have to have the power brick next to it, so that's taking up more room, and there's massive trade-offs galore in this thing. So yeah, we've decided on our case, but you know, we've got a whole bunch of new problems. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you this, that uh, I thought I'd use this very cool and sexy looking uh, G5 Power Mac case, because they are incredibly good looking. I mean, won't this thing be the duck's guts with the Apple logo on there. Of course, we'll add the Raspberry Pi in the middle, so it'll be an Apple Pie cluster, and uh, it'll look very, very sexy, will it not? So anyway, I want people's uh, feedback on this puppy. Of a, you know, what do you think um, is the best arrangement, best solution, especially in terms of, you know, a off-the-shelf switch, maybe that plug-in one, or maybe put them up here and just be, you know, just do it easy, run the cables or, or whatever, and uh, do it that way. So, yeah, let me know your opinion down below in the YouTube comments, on the blog, or on the EV blog forum. Anyway, it's a very sexy case. Catch you next time.